Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I'm here with the end of year tag video. Now this is a video that Ariel created a couple of years ago. I'll link Ariel's channel down below. She's fab. She's doing these amazing house renovation videos that I love. She created it quite a few years ago. However, I've spotted there's been a bit of a renaissance for it on booktube of late and I was looking for something that I could film that would be a bit shorter than usual. I mean, I say that how many tangents I may go on in this video could make it an epic, who knows? But I wanted something a little bit shorter because I'm filming this on Friday and Friday afternoon. And earlier today, I had my COVID jab in this arm and my flu jab in that arm. And already they're quite achy. <laughs> but with my history with COVID and the fact that I'm I have a chronic illness. I was going to say I'm chronically ill, but I don't like saying that. But I have a chronic illness. My nurse did say you could be in for a bit of a bumpy 24 hours, so maybe just chill out. Now, I am taking the positive out of that, and that is that chilling out to me means a weekend on the sofa, reading, watching trash TV, having cups of tea and biscuits. So that is what I'm planning on doing. Anyway, I'll crack on with the questions rather than going off on any more tangents, which is, as I mentioned earlier, often my want. So, the first of the six questions is, are there any books that you've started in 2023 or this year that you would like to get finished by the end of the year? And I don't normally spend that long reading books. That sounds wrong. That sounds as if I like, I binge everything really fast my speed read. I don't. I tend to be one, quite a uh, monogamous reader. I don't tend to read too many things at once. And two, if a book is taking me too long, I either DNF it forever or I DNF it for now. I have noticed that if a book is taking too long for me and something isn't quite working and that can actually make me feel frustrated with the book, hence why I'll either be like, right, I'm done with it or hang on a minute, this just isn't the right time. It's the right book, it's just the wrong time. However, there are five books at the moment that I have that I have had on the go some only this month, three of them, one of them since September, and then one of them since February. I would really like to get them read, if not by the end of this weekend, which is part of what I can do with the next 48 hours I'm planning, but if not, definitely by the end of this month. So the one that I started in February was Catastrophe and Other Stories by Dino Bazzati, which I picked up in Luca. No, that's not true. I didn't pick it up. I was given this in Luca by the lovely Julia who runs the bookshop there. I should say it's translated by Judith Landry from Italian. And these short stories were just pitched to me as just being almost perfection and just really great Italian literature. And so I was like, right, I am sold. Although, like I said, Judy very kindly gave this book to me because she was so keen that I read it. I read the first four or five and Julia was right. These are absolutely brilliant. In fact, they remind me of some of my favourite short stories, which are the short stories of Caris Davis. So I don't know why, five in, I seem to just sort of stop. And I think it might be because I was putting them on the bedside table and sort of picking them up a bit willy-nilly. And I've realised with short story collections, I need to read maybe three or four each day so that I feel like I'm getting through it. Otherwise, they tend to languish. So what I might do is start this one again, possibly actually next month rather than try and squeeze this in this month and um, get it done before the year is through because I was enjoying every single one. They all have... Sorry, I didn't say why Caris Davis' short stories are my favourites, but the reason they are is what I loved in these, which is every single one completely surprises you. You presume it's going to go in a certain direction or is going in a certain direction and then it totally doesn't. And I think that is fabulous. So really, really keen to get these read by the end of the year. Also, I would quite like to try some of his other work if they all carry on as well as that one was until I put it down. Next up is a book that I started back in September and was one that I knew that I would pace myself through anyway, as I wanted to kind of spend a time with each chapter and with each character or characters before I then went on to read the next bit. I should say what the book is, sorry. It is Natalie Haynes' Divine Might, Goddesses in Greek Myth. I'm a big fan of Natalie Haynes. Just as a person, I think she's absolutely brilliant, but also her writing is fab. The 
utter enthusiasm and love that she has for classics and the way she makes it so accessible and so rich and so exciting to read is just a wonder. I absolutely loved Stone Blind. I really, really love A Thousand Chips. I loved Pandora's Jar, which was her last non-fiction before this one. And so I was very, very, very excited. This has been one of my most anticipated books of the year. And I am enjoying it very much. I have switched to audio though. And the reason for that is that I didn't quite realise that this book would be less about the myths that the goddesses are in. Thinking about it, they would just be in so many and that would make it like an absolute tome. It's more about, I guess, how the goddesses in Greek and Roman myth have affected and influenced pop culture today. So for example, there's a part where she's talking about Lady Gaga's Venus, for example, or she's talking about Disney's Hercules, which I really, really want to watch having read the Muses chapter in here. But sometimes I will say when there's like a few pages on, for example, The Hunger Games, which I haven't read or seen, I was reading it and just being a bit like, oh, I feel like, it's, I don't know, there was something about reading it as opposed to now listening it and listening to it, sorry, and Natalie telling you about those stories that just, it was jarring a tiny bit here, but it's totally delightful with all of Natalie's wit and humour um, to listen to. So yeah, I'm hoping to get this done within the next few days because I'll be able to just lie around listening to it with a cup of tea and biscuits, as I mentioned, maybe even some crumpets if I'm really treating myself. In October, I started the next three books, the first of which is If an Egyptian Cannot Speak English by Noor Naga, which is a book I've been wanting to read for ages. And it was a book that I included in my autumnal uh, reading sort of, well, TBR for me because the lovely Nathan over at Nathan's Nook which I'll link down below because you should all be watching him he's a delight had said that this gave him autumn feels as a cover because it was very much kind of like going to the Guggenheim in fall in New York and I get what he means so I said oh shall we read it as a buddy read together and I'm so sorry Nathan I've been dreadful on our first buddy read and I hope you'll let me do another one with you in the future because Nathan has finished this and I still haven't finished part one and the reason I think for that is I'm really enjoying this it's one that I've been really wanting to get to but each sort of chapter and they're quite vignette like sometimes they're like four pages maximum start with a question and then there is all of the the sort of well, the next element of the story of these two people in Egypt. Again, I'm not going to do a big review of this because I will once I finish it. Because then you get a question again. It, I just felt like I needed a pause every so often. And so the pause has just taken me longer to read it. And actually, I'm almost like reading this like each one is an essay, even though it's fiction. So I think I just need to crack the rhythm of that. I think it changes in part two. But yeah, I need to get a wriggle on with this one because... I want to hear what Nathan thought overall before I see it in one of his videos. And ultimately, of the uh, five books that I have started but haven't finished yet is Lauren Groff's The Bastard Wilds. Now, this is an interesting experience because it's reminded me of The Matrix, or is it just called Matrix, which was Lauren Groff's previous novel about nuns, in the fact that it was quite a slow burn, and so I put it down, not forever, but sort of DNF'd it for now. And I have had that vibe with this every so often. Every time I think, oh, do you know what? I'm just gonna DNF it for now. Like, I don't know, a day or so later, I'll be like, oh no, do you know what? I'll just pick up and find out what's going on with the young woman who, in this book, is on the run um, in the middle of the wilderness, which is a very odd experience. That doesn't happen to me very often. And I'm wondering if really I just need to sit down with it and get it done, because I think I've got about 100 pages left. So that's one thing that I'd like to also get done this weekend. And then last but not least, and actually the one that I started the most recently is Gunflower by Laura Jean McKay. And I started that this week as I had the pleasure of seeing Laura Jean McKay talk about this short story collection at West Kirby Bookshop and she was fabulous and I'd wanted to read this anyway because I really enjoyed The Animals in That Country which is her no novel, novel, it's her novel, novel's quite a different thing and I'm just about to read I think the longest story and I'll be over halfway so I can see this getting finished this weekend. That is the end of question one. <laughs> I feel like already I've talked quite a lot and I said this is going to be short. Hmm. How I'm proving myself wrong or actually with me saying that I would probably go off on quite a lot of tangents, proving myself quite right. Question two is, do you have an autumnal book? I've got the questions down there. That's why I'm looking down there. Do you have an autumnal book to transition to the end of this year? Now, 
I feel like we're well into autumn and I'm doing this quite late. I did have a book that I wanted to be the book that transitioned from summer to autumn with, and that was the aforementioned Lauren Groff's The Vast of Wilds. However, as I said, it was taking me a while. So instead, I headed to The Squirrel and The Lost Treasure by Coralie Bickford-Smith. And this is just an utter joy. I mean, one, it is autumnal AF. And um, two, it's just joyful. Like it's a really, really lovely story about a squirrel and some lost treasure. I'm not gonna give away what that lost treasure is. You'll have to read it to find out yourself. And it's not totally autumn, there's also a bit of spring, a bit of winter in it, but it's definitely that transition from summer to autumn, just with the colors and everything. And it was a real treat. I am thinking about books to transition from autumn to winter in, although I'm always in denial that autumn ever ends. But you know, there we go. And I'm between two at the moment and they're both by Kate Moss because I have The Mistletoe Bride which is haunting short stories and I have The Winter Ghost which is a ghostly wintry tale so either of these could be my transition from autumn to winter when I decide I am ready for autumn my favourite season to be over which I think will probably be March. Is there a new release that you are still waiting for? And I thought about this because I was like, oh, I'm not sure that I can think of any. And then I remembered that Heartstopper Volume 5 is due out in December. And I am really, really looking forward to that. So yeah, that's definitely a release that I am awaiting with much excitement. Question four, what are three books that you want to read before the end of the year? Now, really, the question should be, what are all the books that you want to read before the end of the year? But then that would be a very, very, very long video. I may well do a 10 before the end video so 10 books i'd like to read before the end of the year if that's something you'd be interested in seeing let me know in the comments down below these three may not even appear in that video one because i might have read some of them beforehand but also two it changes every day with me what i most want to read and i think that is something that i have been struggling with a bit and has added to me being a bit slumpy i guess um, in the last couple of months because I'm having to read less for work and therefore just being able to choose whatever I fancy off my shelves, that is oddly more overwhelming and I spend a lot more time thinking about what I want to read than when I have X amount of books that I need to read for work. It's really odd, but that is the case. If you heard any banging on going there, um, Chris is cleaning the house from top to bottom as we have one of my friends coming from America on Sunday, which I'm very excited about. Let's get back to the question, which was what three books um, would do you want to read before the end of the year? Today, it's these three. First of all, we have Blackouts by Justin Torres. I really loved his book, We the Animals. I thought it was fantastic. And this sounds incredible. It's about a elderly gay man who I think is unwell and is being looked after by a younger gay man. It's how they share their stories. And then when I was flicking through the book, I spotted, and this didn't seem to be the case with the proof, that there's like quite a lot of multimedia in here. So there's, um, let me try and find some. Like there's a house that's just filled with cats, but I think that could actually be, are they real cats or is that art? It looks like it could be art. So you've got that. And then just various different things like, oh, there's some winkle wees there. Don't look at those. Um, anyway. Winkle Wees, what am I? Five. There's some penises there. I'm really intrigued with this one. And actually, this could be the perfect transition from autumn to winter because I think the colours here are really autumnal, but the colours here are really wintry. That said, I would like to read it before winter arrives. Although, as I said, for me, that's March. So that's the first one. Very, very excited for this. Then we have Let Us, Let Us Descend, sorry by Jasmine Ward. I'm trying to read it backwards on the screen because it's backwards to me, but it's the right way around to you. I loved Jasmine Ward's Sing Unburied Sing. I just thought that was utterly phenomenal when I read it when it was on the Women's Prize long list and have been meaning to read some of her backlist, but this is now here. And so I'm like, right, come on, let's do this one. Um, I think it's going to be quite a hard read because of the subject matter, but very, very keen her to get to it because her writing I thought in Sing Embarrassing was just phenomenal. So yeah, this one's high on my TBR, as is Prophet Song by Paul Lynch, which is up for the booker. And I think this could be the winner. I have yet to hear anyone who has read Prophet Song and not loved it. I'm sure maybe now in the comments someone will tell me that they hated it. There are a few 
people particularly who I really, really trust, including Dan at West Kirby Bookshop, he's like, this is one of the best books they've read in a long time. And I know Jen really, really enjoyed it. I'm trying to think who else I saw who absolutely loved it, but there have been loads of people just saying how phenomenal it is. I'm loving the size of that font. I mean, I will say there's barely any breaks in it, but oh, that is lovely. The proof of the font is much smaller. So I picked up this, funny enough, in West Kirby Books just the other day. So those are the three that I uh, would like to read before the end of the year. The fifth question is, is there a book you think could shock you and become your favourite book of the year so far? And this is something that I was talking about, funnily enough, on Patreon the other day, as every month I keep, um, a, I guess, a record of what my top 10 books of the year so far are. There have been a point where it has been my top 12, but I'm trying really hard to keep it in my top 10. And it's really interesting to see how that changes and how some books drop off the top 10 and then they come back and how, like, one book was really sticking at number one and then it got knocked off quite swiftly and sort of went down the chart. One of the things that I was saying though was at the halfway point of the year, well not even the halfway point of the year, sort of recently, I am really hoping that I read some books that really make it really hard for me to create a top 10 because there's so many good books that I've read and I think that's in part due to the fact that I have been a little bit slumpy in September and October but also just because I know so many amazing books have come out this year and I just haven't got to them yet. I am really hoping there are not just, well that there isn't just one book that shocks me to becoming one of my favourites of the year but that there are several books that really shock me and become favourites of the year. I will say, I can see the top 10 just there and they're pretty blinking corking so it's going to take quite some books to do that. However, I do think it is pretty possible but we'll see. Um, and then last but not least, sorry that was a dreadful tease because if you're not on my patrons you don't know but it is linked down below, just saying. Question six, have you already made plans? I can do an auto cue when it's right ahead of me, but I clearly can't do, and they call them this, idiot boards when they're down below or to the side. I just can't do that quick enough. Question six is, have you already started making reading plans for next year? And the answer is kind of. So I'm really keen that next year I definitely read more by whim. That said, I also have a new job that really comes into action next year as the literary curator for Story House. That said, I would like to take this opportunity to say, because when I did my slump video, people kept saying, oh, it's because you work in books now. Da, da, da. I would say that only maybe 20, 25% at a push of my reading every year is work reading. When it happens, it can be quite intense. Um, and maybe actually this year it was a little bit more because I did judged two prizes and also presented Sky Arts from Hay, which involved a lot of reading, but I'm not planning on doing any prize judging next year. So yeah, that's part of it. The other bit, and I would love you to start giving us your suggestions actually in the comments below. One of the things that I really, really want to do again next year, and I know mum is really, really keen too, is for me and mum to do our Savage prompts. They have been so much fun this year and they were all prompts suggested by you lovely lot we just picked 13 out of I think it was a trifle bowl if you have a prompt that you would like me and mum to read to next year so so far we've had things like and we don't want the same ones obviously and if you haven't caught up with this year's prompts they are over on Storygraph and um, I'll try to link them down below or I'll link the video where we announce them down below. We've had books that have food in the title, we've had, well next month is a book that's been on your shelf for ages, we've had books from the year you were born or was that the year that me and mum gave each other prompts and then didn't do it properly because it was us giving each other prompts we could get away with not whereas with you having suggested them we've been really invested and it's been lovely seeing what books you have been reading for those of you who have been joining in with the prompts. Anyway, I would love in the comments down below your prompts for 2024 because we do definitely want to do it again next year. And obviously, well, I say obviously, we might have decided not to, but we will be reading the Women's Prize long list again in 2024. And I think what we're going to do between shortlist and winner with the fiction is read the shortlist of the non fiction because the Women's Prize, non fiction prize, the Women's Prize for Nonfiction starts next year. Well, actually, the launch is in two weeks. I'm hosting it. I'm very excited. I'm getting to interview Monica Alley and Susanna Lipscomb about 
what it's like to be the chair of the judges for both of the prizes and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be really, really good fun. Anyway, that is that. If you would like to do this and you have a channel or if you want to do it on a blog or anything like that, consider yourself tagged. One of the reasons that I don't tend to do tags and haven't for quite some time is I don't like the popularity contest element where people are tagging like their favourite people because someone always feels left out or somebody is always accidentally left out. And if you do it, please leave a link in the comments below this so that I can go and find it. That would be lovely. Or just answer the questions, all six of them. I'll put them in the description box and you can answer those. But also do please give me some prompt suggestions for me and mum for our savage prompts next year. I hope you're all doing super duper well. I'm beginning to lag, I'm having a hot flush. I hope you've had a fab weekend. I hope you're reading something great. Thank you as always for spending time with me. It's always lovely to have a chat with you. Let's keep that conversation going in the comments below. And if you'd like to find my Instagram, my Patreon, my wish list, or any of those things, they're all linked down below too. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.